Hi, my name is Peter. Uh, it's been a while, but we're back with another worship reflection. Uh, it took a couple of weeks um, off doing it, as you may or may not have noticed, who knows? Um, but we're back. Um, and in this episode, uh, I want to have a look at a song that I encountered um, at a couple of weekend events uh, run by the guys at CVM. Um, call, uh, the event was called uh, The Gathering. Basically, a bunch of blokes camping in a field near Swindon, which is their kind of catch line for it, um, learning about and praising God. Um, honestly, the sound of like 4,000 blokes in a big top uh, giving praise to God is, is a sound I'm never going to forget. Um, and I would gladly repeat, incidentally. Anywho, um, every year that I've been, and I think every year full stop um, that it's been running, uh, the worship has been led by Graham Kendrick. Uh, he's a he's a great worship leader. Um, and actually, he's a really nice guy as well, really um, humble. Um, and this song was written for the gathering. Um, it's called either Give Me This Mountain or Caleb's Song. Uh, and the reason for the two names will hopefully become clear shortly. Um, this song comes out of the narrative uh, of the people of Israel that we find in the book of Numbers. God has saved them uh, from slavery in Egypt, uh, brought them across the Red Sea. Um, they've been wandering in the desert for a little while now. And finally, it looks like they're about to enter into the promised land, the land of Canaan. Um, but before they do, Moses sends 12 spies into the land. Uh, 12 is a, a important number because it relates to the 12 tribes of Israel. So he sends 12 tribes, 12 spies. I'm, I'm with it. 12 spies into uh, the land of Canaan to, on a recon mission to just kind of figure out, uh, you know, are we going to be able to do it? What's it like there? Is this indeed the promised land? Um, and then when the 12 spies return, this is the report they give uh, in Numbers 13. Uh, and they told him, We came to the land which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. However, the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the Negeb. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the hill country, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the Jordan. But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. See what happens is that the people of Israel side with ten of the spies as opposed to the two who say let's let's go we can do this and there's an uprising uh, there's a, a mutiny people start grumbling amongst themselves um, and they decide that you know what it's gonna be better if we just go back to Egypt sack off this this Moses bloke and this so-called promised land that clearly we have no hope of getting into but Joshua and Caleb, the two spies who were in favour of going into the land, speak up again um, in Numbers 14. Where are we? Uh, and Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. Yeah, him. Who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes and said to all the congregation of the people of Israel, the land which we passed through to spy it out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their protection is removed from them and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. You see, at no point do Joshua and Caleb disagree with the report of the other ten spies. There are big fortified cities. The people are strong. The descendants of Anak uh, generally agree to be a bunch of people who uh, are descended from the Nephilim, who were um, children of, of angels and humans. Um, they were huge. Uh, like Goliath, huge. But what Joshua and Caleb remember, and the other ten spies don't, is that if it's God's will for them to take the land of Canaan, God would make sure that that happened. 
there's a there's a phrase I love that kind of goes along with this uh, that goes when God orders a pizza, He pays for the pizza. And I I probably add to that if God orders a pizza, He pays for the pizza and is probably the one who makes it in the first place. Basically, if God has said that something's going to happen, it will happen, and He's going to be the one to make it happen. So God promised to the people of Israel that they'd be rescued from slavery in Egypt. And they were, and it happened exactly as God said it would. So it would stand to reason then that given that this is the promised land, the land that was promised to the Israelites, God would make sure that his people got it. But as it turned out, the people of Israel, they weren't having it. So God makes them wander in the desert for another 40 years until the whole of that unfaithful generation dies out. And who should lead, after all those 40 years, the people into the land of Canaan but Joshua? Uh, there's something else going on here. Um, in the academic sort of theological circles, uh, it's often called typology. Um, now what that means is that within this narrative there is a type of Christ. It's a similar concept to having a prototype of something, the first version of a thing. Um, essentially there's something going on here that points to its fulfillment in the person of Jesus Christ. The, I mean the Old Testament is filled like chock full of, of Christ types, typologies. Like, seriously go, go and have a look, there, it, it's full of them. The people are promised a land but something stands in their way and not on their own they have absolutely no hope of getting it. But God makes a way for them. God wins the battles for them and it is by God and God alone that they enter the land. All through the scriptures we are promised that God will redeem his people and bring salvation. But there's something that stands between God and us. It's our sinful nature. And that's not something that we on our own could ever hope to defeat. But God has made a way for us to enter into his promised kingdom. And Jesus is the one who leads us there. By his blood we are invited in. By his sacrifice we are adopted as sons of the king. And if you want any more evidence of the typology that's going on here, check this. The name Jesus is transliterated from the Greek Yeshua. Guess what the roots of that name are is in, in Hebrew? Joshua. Search through the promises that God gives in his word. If he hasn't fulfilled them, he will. He will. And he's proved that by being faithful to his word again and again and again. Each and every Old Testament promise about Jesus is fulfilled. Each and every time God says something is going to happen, it happens. Um, King Ahab, uh, the story comes to mind, um, he was told very specifically because he disobeyed God that he was going to die in a very specific way and it transpires, ha ha, it transpires, he dies in that very, very specific way. God would God said this is how it's going to happen and it happened that way. God never promises that we won't suffer in this life but he has promised that he will be with us in the midst of our sufferings. God never promises that we're going to get all the stuff we want but God has promised that he will shower us with blessings, blessings unnumbered. God never promises that we're going to know every step along the walk of life, but we can be confident that if it's God will, God's will that something should happen in our life, it will. And that knowledge should give us the freedom and the joy to do what it says in Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6, to trust in the Lord and lean not on our own understanding. In all our ways acknowledge him, because he will make our path straight.
your faithfulness and known your presence. And some have stumbled on the way. By grace alone we're here today, here in your presence. The race is not yet run, and battles to be won, but in your strength I'm strong. Though giants bar the way, our God is strong to save, you made me bold to save. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain for your glory. Give me this mountain. Jesus' blood has overcome, and I'm not quitting till it's done. In your name we rise and To victory if we know that you are with us. With angel armies all around, till on the mountain top we stand, oh, praising Jesus. The race is not. strength I'm strong Though giants fall away Our God is strong to save You made me bold to 